So these were just kind of some examples of magnification, I guess, good pictures as far as especially for upper ribs, but definitely like this was kind of shot for the left. You can see how it laid out the ribs here, but see how they hook around a little bit? Probably not quite enough oblique on this patient because you still see that little hook in the ribs. We want to lay that out, so turn them up a little bit more. And then on this one, we see them all cross over, but what we're really focusing on here is the articulation. So we can actually see where the head articulates with the vertebrae and where the tubercle articulates with the transverse process all the way down. So good amount of obliqueness here. Maybe could have used just a slight bit more, but this one definitely needs some more. When you're seeing big curls like that, that's what this picture is for. We didn't really accomplish the goal there. Um, lowers, this is kind of a, a good lower. Definitely could have been centered lower and collimated, but as far as kind of technique and stuff, um, you know, you can see everything, but notice this tiny little BB. It's kind of hard to pick out. What if this patient had a lot of breast tissue or a lot of any tissue? We'd never see that. I just saw a series the other day, pain, right midline. Even the big BB didn't show up hardly. I mean, it was so faint. Right over mediastinum, right sternum, vertebrae, everything in the way. Make sure you're using those big BBs. And that's kind of all I order anymore. So if you guys yeah. run out of BBs, I have a bunch in my office. So. I know sometimes people were bringing in little BBs and just yeah, using the little, little tiny yeah, those are really hard to see on here. I mean, this is a pretty good exposure in that. That can even get a little bit lost. So this one I just had kind of thrown up and I just put a little, how, what's wrong with this picture? What, what should be done to fix this picture? First of all, what kind of picture were they trying to get? <laughs> what side are we trying to get? Let's start with that. Okay, so we're assuming this is a right rib series. So we're centered on the right side. Do we know where the area of pain is? We have no idea. Are we shooting uppers? Are we shooting lowers? We don't really know. Hopefully we're not shooting uppers because we clipped ribs one and two. But at the same time, it's an upright film. So a little confusion there. Um, how's their collimation? non-existent how's their centering i don't really know how's their technique not really good for uppers or lowers so this is kind of i think why people are like oh ribs suck i hate ribs well <laughs> there are a lot of things we could do when we have this protocol and we're shooting uppers upright and lowers recumbent and we're shooting the appropriate techniques and we're collimating appropriately to the area of interest, we eliminate a lot of that. There's so much scatter on this picture and look at the breast, breast tissue. I mean, if this is lower rib pain, no wonder we can't see the lower ribs. You know how much extra tissue is in the way? I guarantee this moves. Get it up out of the way and you'll be able to see through that have them it drives me crazy i see so many of those just have them move it out of the way it would look a lot when they lay down it kind of takes care of itself but it's on the uprights that you're really going to see that as a problem but lots of things we could do to fix this throw a bb on so we know area of pain um, you know just your techniques your collimation all of those kinds of things are going to be really kind of critical on rib exams. I did write out a bunch of examples or typed out because we can't print films anymore. Um, I have a lot of examples that I wanted to demonstrate and I wanted to show you, but without actually being able to print them, what I did is I just wrote up a little list of the patient's name and what, you know, the date, so you can go and pull them up online. And I wrote little notes on them for you. So look at these series, there, there are only five of them. Two of them I, I said excellent series. So they're good examples of pull them up and look at what should be done. Great collimation, great centering. One of them even has everything labeled like 72 inches, 72 inches, the recumbents 46 inches. Done in room one and that was the most that he could get. So he actually labeled those three pictures 46 inches. Um, recumbent. Don't label all of your lying down ones 
supine, because if they're in an RPO, they are not supine. Please, recumbent, okay, means laying down. But I have, two of them are perfect series. They're, they're gorgeous and they're labeled well and the picture, pictures are shot well. So look at those two for sure. The other three are ones that I put little notes on that things that were maybe mislabeled or misshot or misrepresented. Um, one of them is a patient who was very large and had a lot of breast tissue in the way and one of these had no collimation at all. It was a right rib series and you can see bilaterals. You can see actually half of the patient's arms on every picture. No collimation throughout the entire series. So just some things and little notes and it's, I mean, it's just a half a page, but I'll, I'll give those to you guys and if you wanna look them up and just get familiar with what a good series versus a poor series looks like. And that way when you're doing them, you'll have an idea in your head of kind of the end goal of what they should look like when you submit them. And if you have any questions about protocols or what's appropriate, come and ask. I mean, we'll, we can go through it again. It's, you know, practice, practice.